Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This is Hurricane Barrel, of course, that hit early in uh, last season. Now, it's almost the time of the year a lot of those scary hurricane forecasts are going to come out. So I want to start putting things in perspective. And on this channel, I'd just like to let you know where hurricanes may eventually go or not go and just uh, do this for safety. So I want to show you what I look at even this time of year through the winter, which hopefully uh, gives you some... Um, uh, reassurance that I'm on top of this for you and if anything does develop like this again and let's hope not I do not root for storms let's hope not uh, but I would be able to give you advanced warning right here on this channel so thank you for taking the time to subscribe now of course barrel absolutely devastating uh, the recovery it's it's still on going no doubt St. Vincent Grenadines over toward uh, parts of Grenada now what happened with this uh, early last season is it rolled over one of those hot pockets in the water so I want to cover that. So here's the Caribbean. Here's the path of a barrel and right where it went over. It wasn't only some uh, unusually warm water, but the depth of the warm water, it went was pretty substantial. It went down pretty far. So as it moved over these hot pockets, it just churned up more warm water. And that's what feeds the hurricanes. And that's why we could see something go from a weak tropical storm to a major hurricane very quickly. But on this channel, I'm here to give you that early heads up if that were to happen. And again, hopefully uh, not as we get into the upcoming season. Right now, let me set the stage of what I'm looking at even in the winter. I keep an eye on those water temperatures to see how they're doing, to see if they're running above average or below average. Right now, 27 degrees uh, Celsius, 81 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, in parts of the uh, Caribbean. So water temperatures uh, have actually cooled a little bit, which is typically good, but this is just a seven day uh, temperature trend. You see uh, coastal sections of Texas, Louisiana, for example, where they had big winter systems roll in a couple weeks ago that uh, with the snow they had, that of course cooled down some of the water temperature. So over the last week, there's been a warming trend with that breeze around in the Caribbean. Some of our windy weather, this blue shading here, there's been some cooling, but I look at much longer term than just seven days. So this is the, uh, th these are the water temperatures versus average. So while it has cooled in parts of the Caribbean, you see this orangey shading or yellow shading where we have that, the water temperatures are running above average. So with that said, that's not necessarily good, of course, for hurricanes, but water temperatures are just one of so many factors I watch out on the hurricane season. Sometimes you could have really warm water, but a lot of Saharan dust and dry air, and that prevents hurricanes from forming. So uh, we just kind of have to wait and see together. So watching this all behind the uh, scenes for you, but I do like to let you know what I keep an eye on. I watch the tropical Atlantic this time of year as well. And once again, all of the water temperatures are running above average, which is not necessarily a good thing uh, because that could mean uh, more and stronger hurricanes. With that said, again, remember that is just one of so many ingredients that I'm watching. Now, here are those hot pockets. This is called heat content. And along with the Saharan dust and dry air, that's a major ingredient. This is another major ingredient, major factor for hurricanes. These are the bad areas uh, where you're seeing this yellow shading in here. That's warm water. So again, that could feed hurricanes, but it's warm water that goes all the way down. When a hurricane rolls over the water, it churns up the water. And sometimes it brings up the colder water, and that's a good thing. And then the storm could maybe not get as strong or eventually weaken. But as these storms sometimes roll over these hot pockets, the high heat content, like we saw with barrel, it just brings up more warm water and just feeds these things. So what I'm doing now through the winter is keeping an eye on where some of these hot pockets are setting up. So as we get into the hurricane season, I'll have a good feel of where, not only where the storms may go, but if they pass over some of these areas that they may strengthen pretty quickly. And then it's my job to give you that heads up uh, so that you can uh, be prepared best you can for you and your family. Short term, we're enjoying some winter weather. We've had a few showers, Stacia. We've had a couple near St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I've been watching that from overnight. Lots of action, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, up toward the northern United States, parts of New England and the mid-Atlantic. Uh, 
several snow events that we'll be moving in. So we'll start big and then let's zoom down. We have one, and you see how this stays all north of the Caribbean. The front's not getting down, and that's why a lot of us have had that early spring. We still have that strong easterly and then southeasterly flow across the Caribbean. But you see the snow and even an icing event, parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, over toward Connecticut and Rhode Island. Now, Atlantic region of Canada, that will just kind of skim by. More storm systems develop through the week ahead. But here's what's going on. Here we are in the Caribbean. This one's a little more to the south. You see Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia, even parts of North Carolina, getting some snow. So that means colder air is a little bit more to the south, but still these fronts not coming way down to the south. And it's one after another. This here is by the time we get into Wednesday night, you see this system here, but we still have that southerly flow out ahead of it. So overall, we're looking good. I'm going to keep behind these pockets of rain down the road. Heads up, Trinidad, Guyana, Suriname. As we get into next week, it could get a little bit wetter, but then watching these systems this year is by the time we get into next Sunday. This one does dip a little bit more to the south, but it still kind of weakens for us in the northern Caribbean. So we're not looking at much in the way of cooler air, but it will clip by again parts of the Atlantic region of Canada and over toward New England and the mid-Atlantic with the mix of snow, ice, freezing rain, and some rain. I've been watching some of those spotty showers, and we'll have that today. You see here, this is our Saturday afternoon. Hit or miss shower for us in Jamaica, Belize, Honduras, Nicaragua, one or two Costa Rica, Panama. So few uh, passing showers possible as we pull, uh, pull forward into our Sunday forecast. And you see generally the same thing. Some of us may get a shower, others won't. Passing shower will be a possibility. And then as we get into the week ahead, you see some hit or miss showers. Uh, Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, we may get a couple, but later in the week, it could get a little bit wetter for us in the southeastern Caribbean, so I'll watch out for that. Now, the Atlantic waters, with these big systems rolling off the United States, every now and then, the seas really build, but with our persistent easterly flow, we stay choppy in the Caribbean and watching those Atlantic passageways two to about three meters, so we're looking at about seven, eight, nine feet in spots. This here is by Monday, so watching some of those elevated seas. Now, here's that system to show you the Atlantic region of Canada, Bermuda, northern Bahamas. The front does not dip down to the Bahamas, but you see that snow kind of working across, just kind of skimming us by over toward Nova Scotia and then getting closer to the Avalon Peninsula by the time we get into Sunday night and Monday morning. And then you see the next system that will be eventually developing Monday afternoon. And that one will be a little bit more to the south, but not moving into the Caribbean. So if we get a shower, rain totals are just not super high. You see uh, Jamaica, a little bit of blue on the map. We may get a quarter of an inch of rain, maybe about 10 millimeters of rain, a little bit more Eastern Dominican Republic. Puerto Rico, we could get a few few isolated showers, same thing, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and watching out for a spotty shower, Guadalupe, Dominica, Martinique, and then south through Trinidad, Barbados, we may get a hit or miss shower. Same thing in St. Lucia over the next uh, couple of days. Guyana and Suriname, still some totals that could be near 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain, but later in the upcoming week, the rain chance will be building. And then scattered showers, I could give a few spots in parts of Central America, about two inches of rain or 50 millimeters of rain, not as much Mexico City back toward Texas. So the next couple of days for us in Jamaica, rain chance holding at 30%, a 20 to 30% chance in the Cayman Islands, a 20 to 30% chance as we work our way back through Trinidad and Tobago. For the week ahead, though, it will start to gradually increase for us in Trinidad. Rain chance 30% today in Barbados, 20% chance tomorrow, and a 30% chance right through the weekend in St. Lucia. Rain chance holding at 20% as we work our way into Grenada. We've had a few showers nearby. Same thing, same fence to the Grenadines from overnight. 30 to 40% chance of rain through the weekend. We do that again in Martinique. 30 to 40% chance in Dominica. And as we work our way into Guadalupe, rain chance about 30% today and Sunday. Rain chance holding at an isolated 30%. Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, the same thing. 30 per uh, percent chance Anguilla and St. Bart's into next week and a 20 to 30 percent chance St. Martin, Save and Stacia. We did have a few showers though around from overnight and you see the rain chance in Puerto Rico a little higher for us today about a 40 percent chance. 20 to 30 percent chance U.S. and British Virgin Islands. 20 to 30 percent chance in the Bahamas. It's not really high and you see we're mainly dry the next couple of days in the Turks and Caicos. 40 percent chance of some scattered showers in the Dominican Republic. Mainly dry the next few days in Haiti.
80. Rain chance holds at 40% in Belize. Some of us get a shower, others don't. 20 to 30% chance in Aruba, 20% chance today in Curacao and Bonaire, and about a 30% chance for tomorrow. 50% chance today in Guyana, then it goes down slightly, but deeper into the week, it will start to climb again. Same thing as we work our way over towards Suriname. We're mainly dry across uh, Cuba. 30% chance Costa Rica, Panama, isolate it. 30 to 40% chance in Nicaragua and a 40% chance of a shower this weekend in Honduras. Rain chance stays limited, Guatemala and El Salvador. Rain chance stays on the limited side as we get back toward Mexico City and a 20% chance of a shower across the Yucatan Peninsula. 10 to 20% chance in Colombia, 20 to 30% chance in northern Venezuela and watching the tail end of a front nearby in uh, Bermuda for today. So through the winter, I am monitoring those water temperatures and those hot pockets very carefully. The warm pattern remains for us in the Caribbean. Some showers around, I'll be tracking that. Drought conditions, also keeping an eye on that as we uh, get deeper into this month. Some of us get some showers, others are too dry. And monitoring some earthquakes, there was uh, one of about four uh, in magnitude near the Cayman Islands. So keep an eye on that. That was about six miles uh, down. So always watching the earthquake activity. So thank you for sharing this channel with others and subscribing. Have a good day ahead.